evening all on uh, chess pace and uh, I'll be live streaming this to live stream com just sorting out the board for live stream viewers on a slightly different computer than usual tonight I'm hoping to get board okay uh, the board looks to be okay now uh, just check that okay um, right I thought we could go over some more Gibraltar games. Um, so, Yifan Hu. Um, so, let's have a look at some of her uh, key wins, which are not yet on, on my YouTube channel, YouTube Home Kings Crusher. So, we'll kind of try and get a good impression of her games. And um, just wait one minute or two for some more able to finish I think there's a previous chess space lecture uh, one or two might come from that so one second while I turn down the TV as well <coughs> maybe or so uh, that Gibraltar had so many uh, grandmasters playing in it I think it's one of the strongest uh, tournaments going as far as title players uh, well at least in Europe surely it's probably one of the strongest now um, so the 17 year old uh, Yifan Hu did remarkably well <clears throat> okay. All right, let's have a look at this uh, first game. So Adam Hunt playing white, who's a strong international master, uh, British international, international master. And um, he, uh, he's he got a, a very strong sister, actually, um, Harriet Hunt, who, who was a British ladies uh, champion, I believe, a few times. Uh, um, and she's a WIM, um, or maybe even, I'm not sure if she's got... WGM, I think she's WIM. Um, but anyway, so E4 from Adam. And um, Adam actually played my good friend Alex in the recent uh, London Classic. Quite a dangerous uh, E4 player, actually. Quite sharp and uh, tactical. So with White, he's quite un uncompromising. He plays very direct, uh, you know, aggressive system with White. Uh, very soon actually Keres attack g4 so I think many of us would be frightened by this move g4 um, and um, okay but uh, the reaction was just to play knight c6 uh, no like h6 to try and put the brakes on on g5 or anything just knight c6 putting a little bit of pressure on d4 because uh, the knight if it's chased can always come back maybe uh, to e5 or c5 potentially depending on the on the position uh, so g5 knight d7 okay uh, bishop e3 now and now bishop e7 seemingly not worried about uh, possibly just casting into a kind of ready-made attack here on on the king side uh, of course the g5 pawn is also under fire from the last move hi chess explains oh, we've got im chess explains on, on live stream as well to sort of hopefully uh, I'll echo his, his comments as well it's great to have an, uh, an IM as well um, here uh, okay so h4 and um, <clears throat> okay so now uh, Yifan plays um, a6 okay not yet castling kingside and now often in the English attack this queen d2 uh, and then castles here actually queen e2 uh, which i think um is, is quite dangerous in other respects 
Oh, uh, what if e5 to take on g4 with the bishop? No, the, bish the bishop's locked in at the moment. There's no um, e5. What? Sorry, what move? I don't think that's in this position to take on g4 with the bishop. I don't think that's a problem at the moment. Um, but if you can give a, a specific move number, I can investigate that more. Okay, so queen queen e2 at the moment, and uh, queen c7 was played. Okay, so it looks as though black is is creating a kind of strong point against the e5, and the queen could be useful on the c file later. Um, oh, possible after g4 was initially played. Oh, pardon me, ch pardon me. Okay, if we go back to this position and g4, uh, so you, you're saying um, after knight here, e5, uh, I think actually knight f5 blocks in the, the g4 attack. And and this this potentially quite good, this knight f5. Um, and if, if g6 here, I think knight e3, and, then, and again you're, you're protecting g4, and you've got a good control of d5 and it's a big hole yeah so I think that's that's one reason uh, Trista, Trista, Tristessa okay all right so um, okay so back in the game so Queen e2 Queen c7 and now Bishop h3 which eyes of course e6 now is there going to be a peace sacrifice on e6 is that really on the cards well it might be on the cards this next move looks as though well, it, it defends adequately now e6 against any potential peace sack. Puts more pressure on e4. White castles queenside, and it still looks aggressive. And now knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, and it looks kind of scary. That really, would you want to castle here? In fact, I want to ask um, all of you uh, this question. If you have the position here in the Sicilian with black, uh, would you like to castle kingside here? How many of you would like to castle kingside or not? If you want to castle kingside, um, maybe say yes. And if you don't want to, say no um, at the moment. Um, does it look kind of scary to anyone to castle kingside? Or is it just my imagination? <laughs> um, A lot. Some of you are saying no. Um, well, what else is is asked? My chest explained. No, no. Scary. Yeah. Uh, so rook g8 might be possible. I don't really know. Um, you know what? What about, for example, um, maybe not even moving the b pawn. What about um, bishop d7 and then castle queenside? Is that an, an option? Is that an option? Possibly. I don't know, does that get blown away? The king's in the center and it's faced with an x-ray attack, so there might be knight d5 if if black's not careful. That's the problem with bishop d7. Kind of disconnecting protection on e7. Um, no, but at the moment g7 is hanging, yes. So rook g8 doesn't look too pleasant though, does it? Wasting another move. Uh, so I guess now you, knight d5 might be in the air. Um, as well as some other unpleasant things. In fact, if bishop d7, uh, there's always b4, maybe trapping um, the knight. Where would the knight go if it hasn't got a retreat square? So this bishop d7 doesn't seem actually uh, that likely. Um, although knight a4, no, maybe that's okay. Bishop d7 supports knight a4. But no, I think knight d5, the king still in the center is a bit worrying. But interestingly, okay, so interestingly, actually, um, Yifan did castle seemingly straight into the attack. So I found the game kind of remarkable, um, you know, for the guts in this game. I know the Shirov game was also a very frightening Sicilian defense. Uh, she had actually about seven Sicilian defense games in this tournament. So it did very well out of the Sicilian defence as an opening. Um, so now rook dg1. So it looks as though, yeah, we have two rooks here. We have bishop here pointing here. e6, um, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know, the queen's got easy path to h5. Um, so I thought it was pretty scary, this position. Uh, so now b5 was played. And now it gets even scarier, actually, after bishop f5. It looks as though the queen, you know, might be a misplaced piece. You know, if takes knight d5, looks crushing. 
um, at least to me it looks completely over in fact this position because we've got one two three I actually thought this was over here I couldn't believe it black now takes and is a piece up fine knight d5 queen b7 and you'll notice um, black has not opened any lines at all against the white king the white king looks dead safe here uh, so we have coordination and I don't know if I haven't really done a detailed post-mortem but it looks as though intuitively uh, this looks like a disaster just waiting to happen and I found it incredible that um, okay the next few moves incredible um, you know so Queen h5 was played and now a key move which seems actually no I did do some brief post-mortem analysis with an engine a few days back and it was found this next move uh, really helps blacks survival chances quite considerably uh, I think other things would just lose horribly it's this next key move okay black is a piece up but without this next key move uh, it starts to get very dangerous so knight e6 which okay attacks the bishop uh, protects g7 um, and it does um, mean also this queen potentially is undermining the center okay so um, in in this position uh, knight f6 was played knight f6 check okay offering another piece to open up the lines now black wasn't ob obliged to play g takes black instead played bishop takes and after bishop takes can't sorry g takes it looks really dangerous but as i say this this e6 is holding black together for the moment g6 okay and you know again it looks as though for example uh you know could could um you know queen h6 uh be dangerous but the knight's holding you know g7 for the moment uh, and there might be queen e4 um coming up okay so white actually played f3 guarding that e4 pawn and now another move which looks very important defensively just to play king h8 so black's a piece up fine uh the queen's now hanging after this unpinning of of the g pawn so the queen moves okay now rook g8 is played uh so this is holding the fort again two pieces are holding g7 um now h5 looks even scarier as though hg and h7 and look at this this side on the queen side uh one would imagine you know Kasparov looking at this and thinking you know you if Kasparov was white you know black wouldn't get away with this because look at this um there's no there's no lines to the king uh these you know they, they're, they're a long way from any attack um how can we describe this provocative uh, bordering on just getting mated on h7 probably but this next move is another key defensive move you want to keep the lines closed particularly the h file so a very key move facilitated by this knight actually uh, is played now uh, which is to play g5 so it keeps the Queen's actually locked in at the moment so that that keeps the, the lines closed so it's not that scary now for the moment and the, the, the knight is attacking the bishop now that the rook's controlling g7 so bishop moves and then we see f4 and the queen's also trapped in now the queen's trapped in and so white decided to sacrifice another piece at move 24 bishop takes f4 and actually that's also taken with knight takes f4 so two pieces up uh, but is white's is white's attack breaking through now rook takes g5 rook takes g5 queen takes and now the knight returns to protect g7 as well as attack the queen queen g2 so remember two pieces up now bishop d7 uh, with the immediate threat of rook g8 
Rook G1 was played. And now after Queen B6, you know, two pieces up, White actually just resigns here. Um, well, you know, what? where is the attack now? Where, where is the attack? This knight is holding everything. If, you know, it's too, everything's too slow now. There's E3. There's no attack. White resigned here. Uh, so I thought it was interesting. It seemed to be very provocative and castling straight into an attack. Uh, but it seemed a key defensive uh, resource, resources, maybe this was all analyzed before the game, I don't know. But it seems 96 was holding black together. If we have a look at that again. Um, so are you all shocked by this game? It just seems to be um, cold defense in the light of a creative, you know, you could argue a creative dynamic attack attempt, which failed, really. Um, but um, let's, let's do an overview and summary. So a very sharp Sicilian with the Keres attack. And Knight C6 played. Um, and then Black, you know, really just casually just castling into it. Uh, seemingly giving White everything they want. There seems to be a creative move, Bishop F5 coming up. And, and very logical, Bishop F5. Very logical to seemingly exploit the misplaced Queen for the tempo gaining knight d5 you know i i think you know white's play in another game could have been this could have been a brilliant uh, attack is it Vel velomirovic attack he looks like a velomirovic attack as well as a Keres. maybe they're very very similar with the queen on e2 instead of on d2 the velomirovic systems uh, he was a very dangerous attacking player with white um so bishop f5 didn't wipe black out so I don't know actually you know I don't recommend playing like this at all with black I don't think I've ever played a game like this with black and I don't think I would ever want to actually the fact that black won the game is interesting um, it's it's sort of interesting this knight e6 which is facilitated actually by by the pawn move for knight e6 to actually become a resource it's not a resource yet knight e6 protecting g7 so if it's all about g7 defense i suppose it's instructive for how to defend your g7 but i wouldn't play like this i don't know about, about you um guys, guys it just seems if you have no fear though um you know a computer style maybe this is the modern way if if positions uh, can be survived because uh, also her game against shirov uh, she survived a seemingly very, very dangerous position. And this is yet another example. You know, I think it's quite uh, amazing. Uh, but it's F, you know, this E takes, gives E6 for the knight, uh, which defends G7 later. Who would have thought? So, took knight D5, queen B7, which still exerts pressure on the center, very good on B7, as well as protecting E7. Um, so, queen H5. It looks as though optimal, you know, quality for the attack, quality pieces. Just open a few lines. It should have been end of game, but knight e6 seemingly holds things. Um, and, you know, maybe bishop c3, you know, maybe there starts to be, um, you know, b4 on the cards uh, or other stuff. Maybe just, you know, um, f takes and then the queen, you know, d5 is on. Uh, so basically here knight f6 check uh, going two pieces down though it does start to look quite unsound two pieces down especially after this g5 which locks in the queen i know in king's indian type positions to the fan you sometimes play g5 and you try and imprison the queen question on on live streaming instead of king h8 i think i would have played takes on e4 for fear of having the knight kicked right yeah, um, yeah. I think you're joking, aren't you? I think you're asking for a queen sack, mate. <laughs> no, there's no refutation apart from this queen sack. Sorry, sorry. Mickey, are you taking the Mickey? Yeah. Does that, does that answer the question? <laughs> Queen takes h7 is pretty quick. <laughs> okay. So I think g5 is virtually forced. 
to keep the lines closed. Okay. Oh, instead of King H8, sorry, sorry, okay, let's go back. Instead of King H8. So here, F takes E4. Let's look at this. Ah. That's interesting, isn't it? I'm not sure. What would white play here? F4? Alright, so F4, yes. Get onto this G6. If the knight ever moves, then Queen H6, end of game. You know, mating on G7. Yeah. So if F5 takes, then a the rook sack or something. Yeah. Maybe F4, yeah. Okay, so, so in the game it was cold defense, it was King H8. Trying to get the rook in to relieve the knight, you know, for this G7. I guess it's about how to defend your G7. That's a brilliant demonstration then, how to defend G7. Even though this pawn's interfering with this protection. Um, also, potentially the queen's defending if there's ever an FG. But... Um, No, g5 is essential. And then f4, two pieces down. The knight coming in again with tempo. And now the queen making an entrance. She may be to d4 as well to munch that pawn. Okay, so let's go on to another game. Bit of a thriller. Uh, you know, maybe white thought it was going to be end of the game, but it wasn't. So... Now another, these are really crazy games that I'm going to show you uh, this week. This is another crazy game with white though, with, with who is white, you found as white. Um, another Sicilian game. And, um, okay, so E4 from Yifan, playing white. C5, so Li, Li Quang Liem, who is the Vietnam number one, the top Vietnam player. Okay, playing black. Knight f3 d6. Open Sicilian. a6, and now f4. f4, so e6. Bishop e2. So often the idea of f4 is casting and then f5 later. King h1 maybe. f5, try and encourage this, try and get d5. So bishop e, uh, queen c7 castles bishop e7, king h1 off this diagonal. Bit of prophylaxis there. Castles a4 to try and clamp down on b5. Knight c6, bishop e3. And it looks like all theory actually. Bishop f3. So these bishops are controlling, uh, you know, the central squares. There's a clamp on b5 and on d5 as the strategic breaks from black. So black tries to generate some counterplay now with knight a5. c4 looks a bit vulnerable. Um, okay, so bishop f2, which looks like an Adams plan, which he played against Topolov. This bishop manoeuvre to be playing e5 to provoke this, then to play f5. I've seen in Adams versus Topolov. There was a brilliant Adams win in this line. Is that right, Chess Explain? Do you know that game? Adams versus Topolov. So he took the seemingly... Um, it's quite an aggressive system, this potentially. Um, knight d7. Okay. Um, but actually now queen e1. So why... As though, as though uh, sort of preparing e5, maybe. Uh, to, you know, to force d5 and then f5. B6, and now E5 is played, hitting the rook. Bishop B7, now Bishop G3 supporting that E5. So, over protection of E5, Nimzovich will be proud, uh, keeping a strong point on that E5. Okay. Uh, black challenges the strong point now. D takes E, 
f takes and note the king being here means this diagonal isn't so bad for bishop c5s or queen c5 rook c8 rook d1 but now there's pressure building up here on b4 now nasty pin bishop b4 okay but there's counter pressure on f7 look the rooks away from the pawn f7 on this file this next move highlights that i think queen f2 because look now there's bishop takes and queen on f7 so rook f8 defending f7 okay now knight e4 so d6 might be useful bishops you know controlling d6 as well behind that pawn but is the pawn a sacrifice now knight takes e5 is that on it really is taking knight takes e5 what is this pawn sack time bishop f4 now with the idea maybe queen g3 put more pressure on 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 this pin on the queen and highlight here and then maybe knight f6 looks pretty dangerous this queen g3 idea black plays bishop takes e4 giving up that seemingly very valuable light square bishop uh, but now bishop d6 okay so um knight f3 putting more pressure on e5 uh, immediately threatening rook takes d6 queen takes bishop e5 so that's the immediate threat rook takes d6 and if knight takes there's bishop takes d6 so what does black do here black attacks white's bishop on e4 okay bishop takes e5 was played now um now if if rook takes then then maybe uh you know f takes and uh, you know that's nasty uh so so in fact bishop takes e5 will black emerge a pawn up here bishop takes e5 bishop d3 black is a pawn up two pawns up if we count the pawns it is definitely two pawns up three four five six one two three four is white completely lost here no because actually white's going to get a pawn back because uh, there's pressure on b6 here um so rook b1 trying to get a pawn back bishop c3 Or is, is it that easy to get a pawn back here? In fact, in the game, um, knight g5 was played, threatening knight e6, to fault queen and, queen and rook. Okay, so that has to be protected. Also, there might be a threat of queen h4 on h7. If black's not careful, not at the moment, it's not that useful. Queen e7. Now queen e3, forgetting this pawn for the moment, just targeting this again. Because if that goes, then this is weaker from this bishop. Get this these pawns. Knight c4, attacking the queen. That's taken. And now finally getting one pawn back. So only a pawn down, no panic. Pressure on e6, pressure on a6. Looks like a good position. Looks very nice. It's only a pawn down now. But what about this bishop d4? Okay, queen d3 attacking the rook. Rook takes a4, back to being two pawns down. One pawn down after rook takes e6. Queen a3 offering the exchange of queens. That's refused, queen e2. Now there's a, a very interesting thing that happened here. Black is a pawn up. And plays h6 and maybe didn't expect this next move from white um i wonder if you can all guess it or if, if try and hide the move score if you're on the chess base server please can you guess white's next move if i give you uh 20 seconds to have a look at this this is it's very interesting 20 seconds starting from now try and guess
Okay. Um, keeps White's chances alive, at least for maybe a potential check. That's the clue. So Rook takes h6. Forget a knight retreat. Knight retreat too passive, maybe. Um, black is a pawn up. So just Rook takes h6. G takes. Now check. So where's this king going? Um, now the queen is controlling e7 from there. King g7. So now queen d7 check. Is it perpetual check? Now if the king uh, goes here or here, disaster, queen h7 will be mate. Of course. So the king's forced to go up, king g6. Now knight e6. And what are the threats? Okay, f8, queen g7. Other threats. The rook is also attacked. The queen can't easily... It's tied down to, to the rook. Um, other threats. Knight f4 check. Um, rook f3 is out of the question because of back row weakness at the moment. Okay. Uh, in this position, black had a key move. I did a little bit of um, uh, post-bottom. I think there was a key move for black, a blunder in this position which might show that white was a little bit unsound it wasn't played in the game I wonder if you can guess the key move which I think I spotted when doing a quick engine inspection of this game uh, it might, might have been highlighted on, on various annotations as well so 20 seconds starting from now what would you play with black now okay starting to now to the, try and defend yourself starting from now 20 seconds Anyone? It's not F4, no. Can anyone spot a key defensive idea in this position? <clears throat> well, I, I think I, when I checked this with an engine, um, uh, some of you are shouting out now on chess base about four of you are spotting it what, what i found with an engine um well actually the bishop's covering g7 at the moment so it looks as though queen g7 isn't a major threat but rook f7 would, i think would have been better than what was played to attack the queen um and i think also knight f4 there might be you know uh king g7 now because the queen it, it, it's a legal move to play king g7 um, but this wasn't played in the game in the game bishop c5 was played a blunder actually because that the weakness of the last move it was protecting g7 and it's just been moved away to protect i don't know f8 so it's opened up the gate for queen g7 oh black could draw but no more chess explained says so with rook f7 is it a draw and no more this position here is that the case is it just a draw okay Pro probably there's a perpetual check yeah um okay so anyway in the game this 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 was um okay perpetual okay uh, commentary by Jim Benjamin of this game. Okay, ben Benjamin or something? Bishop c5 was played. So releasing, you know, weakness of the last move, which is something I, I go on and on about on my YouTube channel. So, you, you know, YouTube.com Kings Crusher, the weakness of the last move is, you know, a, a move sometimes attacks things and leaves things non-defended. So g7 is pounced on now. The weakness of the last move, g7, going for it. Check. And now knight takes f8, winning that rook. And it's really dangerous now. Black, black's uh, busted, I think, here. Uh, horrible position. Uh, you know, checks and checks. And the king is diabolically placed. The poor king, it was safe just a few moves ago. And now obliterated. 
starting from rook takes h6. Who would have thought? So bishop takes f8. Check, and now here black resigned. It's a forced mate, I think, in about 9 or 10. Um, so, you know, uh, or even quicker. I don't know, it's a forced mate. Uh, I think just g3 was forced, you know, <laughs> ridiculous move. Yeah, so that's, that's mating. So, um... Okay, so that was a disaster from Black, the, a defensive uh, move disaster here, Bishop c5, probably in time pressure approaching, or um, uh, so, I don't know, some time pressure, or just in time pressure to play Bishop c5, uh, unfortunately, and that blew the whole position. Okay, so let's let's have a look at that again, though. It was a aggressive uh, opening system from White, um, so... Um, you know this this plan is is quite aggressive uh for for queen e1 uh to play e5 and bishop g3 it seems logical uh the pawn sack seemed very aggressive and dynamic uh the pawn sack and there's the quiet bishop f4 okay so um knight f3 putting uh, the threat of rook takes d6 to black so f5 doesn't look nice it sort of weakens some of Black's king position already. This f5. I think it makes the position a bit harder to play. Uh, ultimately, uh, the intriguing thing also, though, uh, Black. Sorry, White wasn't that keen immediately to win b6. Instead, probing e6 now with these next few moves. Probing e6 again, and this makes things harder for Black. So, um, um. Things got very tricky for Black now to have to play very accurately now. Um, all right, uh, A Times has written uh, this defeat for Lee Kwan Lim has somewhat affected him at the Aeroflot Open. He suffered three losses in a row. I'm not sure it was particularly this defeat. I'm sure he, surely he got over this defeat. I mean, it was you know, <laughs> it was a tricky position, but yeah, there was a howler in it. Um, you know, this 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 move. Uh, bishop c5, the weakness of the last move. Um, g7 not being protected, it's pounced on and that's it. That's brutal chess for you. Okay, so um, let's go on to another game. Okay, so this next game is... Uh, against Almazi, who's another strong, strong player. So she's white against Almazi. I'm um, not in a Sicilian though this time. E4, E5. So we get Roy Lopez actually. Okay. So knight F6. Castles. Knight takes E4. Open system. Uh, Russian system. So knight D6. No, Berlin Wall. Sorry, <laughs> Berlin Wall. <laughs> Bishop takes C6. D takes E5, so Kramnik loves this sort of stuff, so does Aronian. It's really solid. Get the queens off, reduce the tension. Uh, you've got the bishop pair. Um, okay, solid, it seems for black. So bishop D7, H3, H6, B3, popular move. Polgar had a couple wins, Berlin Wall, on, which are on the channel. So e4 is going to be useful for white. Um, the e5 posted. These knights are going to be aggressive soon. Uh, they're very aggressive in this game, actually, after c5. Knight d5. g5. Bishop b2. It looks logical for this diagonal. I like, you know, white's position looks okay, actually. Rook a d1. It looks as though it's a small uh, advantage, c4. It, you know, the, this is quite aggressive, this setup, surely. Uh, everything's coordinated on e5. This looks aggressive uh, for white. Uh, so b6. Now the other knight springs into action. A retreat before an advance. You know, you can go into these squares. Can attack lots of squares over here. Knight e4. These knights, I find, they they look impressive. White's control um, of you know key squares looks good. King uh, b7. And now uh, rook d2 so simply getting more maybe more pressure on on the d file 
for later on. A5. No, but now the rook doesn't switch or anything. In fact, in fact, the move f4 is played. So immediate threats now. G4, maybe f5. A4. And now g4 is played. And is black in trouble. Knight d4. And now you don't want this line open. So actually this next move very good. B4. So this this knight's a bit vulnerable. A3, bishop a1. Rook a4. So black doesn't seem that solid here. What has he done? He's trying to get maybe over counterplay um, on the A file. Yes, Almazi's playing black here. Did you see this game? Uh, Chess explains. He looks as though he's overextended on the A file. Uh, B takes C5. Oh, he's the godfather of this line. All right. Okay, so he seems to be having a bad position here, but Rook takes C4. Looks as though D5 is undermined, but then the D4 might is going so a desperado tactic before winning d4 to take on c7 desperado to take on d4 next king takes but first the check he's been blown apart already bishop takes d4 what has he done with the position it was solid doesn't look very solid here but uh, is he relying on this pin now rook d8 okay there's a nasty pin protected leaving f4 dro dropping though surely no it's not taken bishop f8 because uh, maybe rook takes um no not rook takes because the knight is on c5 so but first question here why couldn't black play g takes f does anyone know does g takes f lose horribly to something Maybe knight d6. It doesn't look particularly solid for black. But in the game bishop f8 was played. Um, maybe we can come back to this position. In a sec. Now that g takes f4 and played the f1 can move and it does. It can go to f5 here attacking the bishop. Bishop f2, in, you know, the knight's protecting the rook. Pressure on d8. Rook takes, knight takes. Attacking the rook. The knight goes back. Rook c2. Okay, is this pawn a problem? No. Rook d8. Forking two bishops. Bishop b7. Peace up. And um, e6, here black resigned. It seems black was destroyed in this game from a solid position. I think, did he go crazy with the a file or something? This, this, it's not this uh, easy to break, usually, uh, the Berlin Wall. Um, so, I don't know, let's, let's go and look. I think it was black's a file operations. Um, didn't seem that solid for, uh, after the a file operations well c5 i'm not sure about c5 either it seems to give white a nice d5 square i suppose it's he's the expert he knows what he's doing here maybe it's it's not so bad here um but i think okay this rook it looks natural to uh, you know get it activated um but White's plan of f4 looks dangerous to play g4 and f5 uh, later. So White's just, it seems rook d2 is, um, rook d2 is the cunning move, which um, <laughs> seems seems to imply, uh, you know, rook d1, but actually f4 is still on the cards. Okay, so a5, f4, a4 g4 and um, I don't know black just seems in trouble here with this b4 it keep keeps this closed uh, this pawn 
it's not opening a line here um, this D4 knight seems problem a uh, problem piece a tactical target rook a4 and um, the, these knights are very good this one is really putting pressure on c5 it just seems to be winning material I mean it seems to be an easy uh, win on, on the surface um, with black just getting destroyed really I mean <laughs> I don't know but the key question here is G takes f4 what would have happened if G takes f4 maybe I don't know b7 is that a move any ideas G takes f4 I think black didn't need to try and play so actively with the a file knight d6 right so there's no rook d6 is there you've got everything covered here knight d6 yeah move b7 And rook c1, okay, chess explains saying rook c1, yeah. So the rook moves somewhere. Rook c1, yes, this is crushing, isn't it? Horrible. End of game, okay, so uh, so that's not on the card. So bishop f8 maybe covers against knight d6 to be able to take. So f5, bishop f2, knight goes back to e4 with the threat of rook d8 now, as well as the, the knight to fork both bishops. Horrible crush. After e6, the pawn is, I think, you know, queening. Um, by force quicker than than this one let's have a quick look here check maybe king here away from bishop just maybe e7 sorry a, a2 e e7 let's check that can't be right So on this position of the check here, is a2 possible? What is the refutation in this position? Maybe just bishop d4 is, is on a1, bishop d4. That's, that looks simple, doesn't it? Bishop d4. Anyone disagree with that, bishop d4? Speak now or forever, hold your peace, bishop d4. Bishop d4. e7 still wins? Isn't bishop d4 just... If you play e7, check, queen... I suppose here. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> He's queening anyway. Even if you let back queen, you can still queen. <laughs> this queen's not doing anything, is it? It's not doing anything. You're right. No, okay. <laughs> So what did you think of this game, uh, Chester Bay? That's quite brutal, isn't it? Black played somehow the wrong plan of a5, a4. Do you think? Black seemed to give, get crushed, actually, didn't he? In this game. Difficult to fathom, really. Um. <laughs> yeah. No idea how he got into this. Yeah, exactly. So... Okay, let's have a look at a really exciting game now. So last week we looked at three of Nigel Short's games. Now we've done the honours and looked at three of Who's games. Um, Hoy's games. Now let's look at some other key games from the tournament. Uh, two very exciting games from the tournament. Okay. Uh, so the first one I'd like to look at, nothing to do with Short or Who this time, is, is, is uh, whoops, hang on, let's get the game score in correctly. Hold on a sec.
this game score going correct? Nope. Oh there. Having trouble here. Hold on. <clears throat> game score, you all go in. Nope. Um delete all commentary, delete all moves, and uh, delete all moves. Nope, this game score's not going in. Fantastic. Okay, what's the matter with this PGN? Alright, we can still play it through anyway. Okay. So imagine it's not Hunt who I'm gonna to have to change the um uh, change the uh insert nope. Insert new game. Where did the hunt versus who come from? Interesting. I've got this PGN here. I'm trying to put in the PGN. New game. Got it, got it, okay. Sorry, just having technical issues there. Okay, so Emmanuel Berg versus Maxim Lagrave. So E4 from Berg who's a very exciting player and I saw him when I played in Gibraltar one year and um, he made me see the excitement of the Fisher clock it was a two minute increment unfortunately the year I played in it and he had some games where he got very short on time uh, but was calculating very very deeply and was able to get back on the clock with the two minute increment so that's the way to do it if you're ever on Fisher increment with two minute increment you know the clock is really kind of kind of irrelevant with two minute increments but they've speeded it up since that in Gibraltar um, I think it's a minute increment now or 30 seconds it's I don't know it's much quicker so c5 from Maxim Lagrave knight f3 d6 we have an open Sicilian Nydorf bishop g5 e6 now f4, very aggressive, h6, bishop retreats to h4. Now poison pawnish, this next move, queen b6, going for this poor b pawn. And it's offered, the pawn is offered with queen d3. So we have a transposition into the poison pawn variation. So rook b1, queen a3, very sharp, f5, okay, so bishop e7 was played, white took on e6, it looks dangerous for black, oh, you think they both play it with both colours, okay, so it's very exciting, entertaining, uh, sharp position, so bishop e2, okay, well, Cool, blimey. Sorry, let's go back. Sorry, bishop e2. Okay. Black castled. White castled. So clearly, um, in this position, black is a pawn up. <laughs> Look, if we count pawns here, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Black's clearly just a pawn up here. <laughs> no, but actually, these pieces are on holiday at the moment, these three. Um, uh, the, these, these two pawns don't look particularly good. Uh, this knight's got pressure all over the place. E5 looks dangerous. Uh, this looks dangerous. This rook kind of transfer ideas, gaining a tempo on the queen. Um, what else? There's all sorts of possibilities. So white's got enough. King h8 king h1 so they both want to uh, get their kings tucked away here in this critical position and now the fight begins so the first ingenious move from black is to apparently leave a pawn unprotected as as i mentioned this knight striking at e6 all the time which seems to be making knight d7 an impossible move but now the impossible move is actually played knight bd7 is played leaving the pawn hanging so why is this is it an evil trap knight takes e6 and the evil trap 
is allowed. So knight e5 attacking the queen, attacking the bishop. Surely not. So if white wants to defend that knight, uh, this doesn't look adequate. Queen h3, you can just take and then take on c3. So no, white cannot play queen h3. It doesn't want to go into a pin anyway in principle. You don't want to go into a huge pin. No, what he does is a queen sack here of some sort. Um, white plays a queen sack. Knight takes f8, offering the queen. The queen sack. What is going on now? Okay, rook for the queen. But there's a check and all is starting to be revealed. It's going to be a queen for two pieces soon. Uh, but what about this? This queen is also attacking c3. Surely not. So king h7, bishop takes d3. So we've got a rook and another piece for the queen. But, um, you know, what, what about this? Uh, what about that? Isn't that on as well? So there's two, two knights hanging here. So which one to take? Now in the game, actually, black used king carnivorously with king takes g6. So what if, uh, well, that's the game. Uh, we could return back to this position to examine uh, queen takes c3 here, maybe. Okay, but um, there seems to be a, an imminent e5 threat as well. So king takes g6. Material situation now. <clears throat> What is the material situation? Uh, okay, let's do counting. 5, 10, 13, 16, 19. Uh, let's call the queen 9, uh, 14, 17, 20, 23. So black seems to be significantly material up at the moment. Okay, but the attack rages on. E5 check. Okay, E5 check. Where does the king go to? Can it not go to f7? You might ask. Go to f7. It's it's possible, but uh, maybe you know this f file looks scary for black with ef and then maybe uh, knight d5 in the future. So in fact, the king marched forward, king h5, attacking uh, this bishop. <laughs> with the king so I don't know it's it's crazy but um, white has a lot of threats still in this position and he carries on uh, with e takes f6 um, which seems this is a crazy position actually uh, but, but the ba basically um, I think here if, if queen takes, then f takes, and it's dangerous for queening um, the pawn, or or dangerous for the king, one one or the other, um, or both. The, ki the king's kind of precariously placed here. So, in the game continuation, bishop takes f6. And white played bishop takes f6, g takes. So we have here two rooks. Uh, knight and bishop versus queen and the rook and bishop. So actually, white is not doing badly uh, material-wise here, as badly as before. He attacks the queen and protects his knight. Rook takes f6. And this king is looking badly placed now. There's check on the cards. Then maybe g3 if the king ever moved to h4. So bishop d7. And there's also another possibility now, knight e4, so this goes maybe to g3 for a check. Bishop g4. Now h3, remember there's, there's a threat of queen e1 which can be answered at the moment with rook f1. Yeah, this this won the best game prize at, at, in the Gibraltar Open. Um, it's very uh, complex, um, all the various defences. So we're just 
go through the game first and then go back I think um, Bishop g4 had to be played because of the threat of Bishop e7 let's look at that okay let's look at that now why did Bishop g4 why was it played I don't know why Bishop G4 was played. Does anyone know? Sorry. What threat of Bishop E7? Why can't play Bishop E7? What are you talking about, Bishop E7? <laughs> is, it, is it Knight G3 check or something? Um, well, anyway, H3 was played. Oh, E2, yes. Sorry. Bishop E2, yes, was a threat. Okay, for checking. So it, I suppose it stopped the check. So H3... And he doesn't want to move that bishop, doesn't want to allow bishop e2. Rook g8. Took. He's got more material now. Bishop e2. It's only going to be the queen soon. Queen e1 check. King h2. And black resigned. Why is this? I think takes. Let's say takes check there's knight g3 check here forking king and queen blimey so that that was a good old-fashioned sort of uh, queen second king chase game uh let's go back and start exploring defensive tries so if we go back very complicated game um what happened there after that initial trap was set Let's examine that more closely now. So there's an initial trap set saying take the pawn uh, because of this knight e5 attacking the queen. So it was go gone into because there's this idea of this check on g6 which seems to be backfiring on black's king safety. So white takes the rook, gives up his queen for this knight g6 check. Now, in this position, if king g8, then maybe um, bishop, maybe knight takes e7 is good, although I'm not 100% sure, actually. In this position, if king g8, knight takes e7, or is there anything better? What do you guys think? Knight takes e7 or... That, look, that looks okay actually. Knight takes e7 because then maybe bishop takes f6 which protects c3. Then maybe knight d5 and then you're on f6 and the attack rages on. Also, you've also got bishop h5 check here. And also you've got rook b3 coming in. Okay, sorry. Uh, chess explain. Maybe knight e7 to d5. So it takes... I'll say, you're saying knight d5. Yes, so that's f6 is on. That's protected. This is hanging. Pressure on b7. That looks dangerous. Yes, very dangerous. Material situation here. There's also a uh, bishop h5 check, maybe. As an idea. My line also, yes. Cool. So so basically the king walks into, unfortunately, uh, this dangerous diagonal now. After bishop takes d3. After king g8, bishop takes d3. Can we look at queen c3? Okay. Sorry. King g8... No, no, we're saying knight e7 here. Knight e7. The, the, this protects c3. It's protected. So let, let's let's go back here. All right. So let's go back to this king h7 now. So in this position, 
let's try other defensive tries. After bishop takes d3, two knights were hanging, as we noted before. So was it possible to play queen takes c3? It looks as though there's a temptation to... Um, well, <laughs> either take the knight. Uh, knight takes bishop looks good. Or e5 looks good. Is e5 possible? What does black do here? You know, he could, if he moves the knight, he's going to get, you know, mated, isn't he? If he takes like this, um, check, it looks horrible. Um, maybe rook takes f6 and get mated. Isn't this devastating, e5? Does anyone think black can survive e5? Anyone? Anyone want to play black here? Any fantastic resource? Yeah? Anything? <laughs> this looks quite crushing. Queen takes d3. You want to look at queen takes d3? If we just take, then you take, 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 take. With the exchange up. Look, exchange up. One, two, three, four. Exchange up for a pawn. Uh, pawn. Is that convincing? Does that answer the question? Sorry, queen takes d3. But there might be stronger than after that. Queen takes d3. Is there any stronger, actually? Forget taking the queen for a moment. No, I think taking the queen is simplest, isn't it? Isn't, isn't that the simplest move? Chess explained. That's the simplest move, just to take the queen here, isn't it? There's nothing else, is there? Is there? E takes F. Hang on, E takes F. Queen takes, takes. The, the queen's on queening square. And bishop H3, check, and you're on um, H4 take the queen yeah saves all this hassle just just take the queen yeah does that answer the question just take the queen here Qu queen takes d3 and you would exchange up uh tristess does that answer your question to queen takes d3 c takes d3 this leaves white the exchange up do you agree that's good enough for white isn't it yeah agree tristessa Tris base, Tris Tris Bessa, Tris Dessa. Sorry, I'm not saying your name right. But anyway, also uh, Rook B6. Yes, at the end of that, there's also Rook B6. Uh, these pawns are and and on the firing line after Rook B6, as Chess explained mentioned. Okay. So we'll go back. So Bishop D3, <clears throat> and in the game, King takes G6 was played. Um difficult position to suggest anything because of e5 um, so it seems tempting to try and grab that knight and then the game progressed e5 check and the king came out so what if the king uh, went to f7 if the king went to f7 Maybe uh, here takes, and I think this fails because of check, and and you know um, check, queening. Uh, so say bishop takes, bishop takes protecting c3 for the moment. Knight d5. So we got two rooks. Uh, for the queen, basically, bishop, knight, and bishop. This is this looks like strong, doesn't it? A strong attack. 
Would you agree, uh, chess explained here, king f7, you just take on f6, don't you? e takes f6. Like in the game continuation, anyway. In, in the game continuation after king h5, e takes f6. Bishop takes. Bishop takes, g takes. Now rook b3. So it still, still seems very dangerous for black here. After rook takes f6, the king is trapped now. Can't go back over there. Knight e4. So bishop. So there's a big threat of bishop g4 check. And if bishop g4, there's rook h3 mating. Sorry, that was the threat. So, you know, say, say, say here, right? Check. Th this will be mate. Rook h3. So probably that's why one reason why um, in this position bishop g4 was played to to stop the check as as pointed out to stop bishop e2 in fact so h3 and if if bishop d1 here probably g g4 check is winning material because the knight's holding a g3 here. And if, if bishop takes g4, it's a lot of material now. It's too much material, isn't it? Check. Check. Uh, forcing. Not good. Okay. So that's pretty brutal. The king shouldn't be there on h5. All agree so the king shouldn't be there so this was pretty crushing so it all started from um, a seemingly a trap which wasn't that good um, so this could have been the game continuation it was it was ended there okay um, okay so let's have a look at one should we have a look at one uh, last game or Actually, I did have one last game planned. This, br oh, blimey, it's a big one. Why have I chosen this one? Oh, dear. Does anyone want to look at one last game? Just, or, or should we leave it for next week? We could carry on with, with Gibraltar games next week, or we could try and have a look at a Shirov game. Um, what is the vote? Should we carry on next week? What do you guys think? Um, sure of game quickly. Okay, sure of game quickly. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, so okay, sure of um, playing black. Let's let's flip the board. Um, <clears throat> so d4 and um, and and white um, decided to play um, a sort of very uh, very solid. Um, what what is this attack called again? With bishop g5, um, it's gone. <laughs> bishop g5, it's it's an attack of some sort. Uh, it's the Torre attack. Thank you, Carlos Torre. Um, he was um, Carlos Carlos Torre. After him, uh, that grandmaster. So knight d2. So it's a bit like a London system, you know. Maybe e3, c3. You know, that bishop's biting uh, the triangle soon. So it's biting the triangle. D5, E3. So this solid uh, pawn triangle uh, gives... And this bishop outside the pawn chain could be annoying. Um, but also bishop D3 and E4 later could be annoying. Queen over here and E4 for F7 could be annoying later. Okay, so knight BD7... Which might imply later e5. You know, rook e8, e5 is, is a sort of plan to liberate in the centre. So bishop d3, rook e8, following that plan. But rook e8, weakness of the last move. f7 is a bit more vulnerable after rook e8. So f7, watch out for f7 now. Castles, e5. Now white plays e4 lot of central tension has emerged e takes e c takes 
D takes, knight takes, nasty pin, isolated queen's pawn, h6, and now white goes crazy here, brilliant, seemingly brilliant idea now, uh, targeting f7 actually, doesn't move the bishop, just plays bish queen b3, wow, so Shurov is playing uh, Yusupov, who apparently is, is much calmer usually than this, not so aggressive on the king. Uh, but what what's going on here with f7? I, I did some brief engine analysis on this game. Apparently it, it, it is too dangerous to take on g5. Uh, so h takes, um, you know, knight takes. Uh, th this could be a disaster uh, for black. Uh, this pin, it's difficult to do anything about it in, in some variations, uh, you, you know, because of knight g5, uh, you'd you have a lot of coordinated uh, pressure on f7, and if black loses that rook, you know, maybe then also, you know, queen h3 is going to be useful after you take, uh, so this this is not, um, I wouldn't play this uh, at home, this this position as black here, um, this, this would be exposing a slight problem with rook e8, this variation. So, so actually, actually, the bishop isn't taken. Um, instead, after queen b3, rook e7 straight off the bat. Let's get get getting to work on on f7 being protected already. Okay. So now white plays knight e5, which clearly uh, threatens maybe knight g6. Um, and all sorts of things really. Um, knight f7, uh, maybe knight f6 and bishop g6. Okay, so Shirov now takes on g5, so it's subtly different to before, after knight takes f7. Um, he finds uh, an amazing looking move here which um <laughs> which i'm not i'm not sure i get actually sorry i did i did check it with an engine before i'm not sure i totally get this next move uh can you guys guess it if i give you 20 seconds what does black play here to try and defend this f7 situation if i give you 20 seconds starting from now Any ideas? Anyone? No? Should we just go through the game? Let's really just go through the game. Um, okay. This next move does some magic um, of some sort. Uh, knight uh, c5. <laughs> knight c5 okay I, I <laughs> so clearly it attacks the queen um and you might wonder well actually it liberates the bishop as well look there's bishop e6 on the cards maybe that's one reason why knight c5 is so good so attacking that horrible queen as well as bishop e6 so leaving the queen and pre for you know okay and and also you might think well you know what about knight takes c5 um then surely there isn't uh bishop e6 and that's that's an interesting question as well which i wish you know maybe i could answer if i was much better at calculating variations um than i am so it's it's a great position for checking with your computers at home uh okay so knight c5 was played anyway so in this position, um, in the game, <laughs> knight takes f6 was played. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Knight takes f6 was played. <laughs> okay, he did. So apparently, okay, eight arms is saying, even Shirov, he fought for at least an hour on the rookie seven move to find the knight c5 move. So that makes me feel better. Okay, because Shirov is supposed to be one of the top tactical grandmasters in the world. He's been over 2700 
years and years and years. So, so of course, we can't understand this game, okay? <laughs> we can look at this game, but we can't understand it, I'm afraid. Let's be honest about it. <laughs> we can try and understand it. We, we need some engines working on it and exploring different defensive tries, different attacking tries. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, in the game, knight takes f6 was played. Bishop takes f6. So we still seem to have this situation here of the queen and bishop attacked. Uh, this queen attacked. Okay, it's about to be resolved slightly with uh, d takes c5. Two more pieces coming off. Rook takes f7. Okay. Okay, looks a bit simpler now, the position. Okay. So bishop takes g6. Okay, now it seems we need to defend the rook. It's obvious enough. Queen f8, good move to defend the rook. But now the attack rages on for white, f4, trying to rip open that f file, trying to get onto these pieces. Keep it closed, keep the lines closed, whatever you do, keep the lines closed. g4. No rook coming in for the moment, g4. f5. So, situation here. Uh, white is a bishop down uh, but after this f5 rook f4 to g4 looks good maybe as an idea so uh, black uh, is in difficulty here he plays bishop d7 and now rook f4 happens so g4 and this looks dangerous again uh, but this this pawn is also attacked Bishop c6. I'm saying didn't white miss a win around here. Um, possibly. Possibly. I really need to do detailed engine analysis on this game, actually. Um, so, for some reason, uh, the c5 pawn wasn't taken anyway. For the moment, uh, in this position... Okay, so white's bishop... Um, down he plays king h1 now rook d8 looks as though uh, one idea is just rook d2 just coordinate here but what about rook takes g4 you might ask rook takes g4 was played okay now is this really really dangerous this frontal attack straightforward frontal attack and, you know, bishop takes f7 is the immediate threat with double check on on the king. Um, and also protecting that rook, you know, so there isn't king takes. So this next move at least solves that problem. Bishop d5 now means that bishop takes f7, there's king takes f7 as a legal move. But white sustains the attack now with queen h3. Um, threatening... Uh, well, um, bishop takes and maybe queen check, all sorts of things. Uh, maybe check uh, other threats as well. Maybe, maybe other threats. So rook g7. And now the black king actually uh, gets chased here uh, to the other side of the board quite spectacularly. So we're about to see uh, a chase scene in this game now. Uh, quite remarkable, actually. Okay. Check. The king goes out. Check. King e7. Check. No, not check. Okay, technically. Um, but threatening a check. The king runs to the queen side now. Uh, he is a bishop up. Can he survive this? He runs to the queen side. Rook d1. King c8. So has the king found a safe haven? But what about a7? a7 might be bishop g2 and rook takes or is it queen a8 attacking f8 very difficult to, to to see this actually in in the position queen takes a7 is played because yes there'll be queen a8 winning the queen if bishop g2 king takes rook takes queen a8 will win the queen won't it so in this position shirov plays 
C6, which sort of protects B7 there, provides King C7, protects D5, does a few things. Check, check, and now the king can go to B8. Okay, but Rook A4, now looking again dangerous over here. In this position now, another key defensive move is played. You must have nerves of still to play on this. Bishop e5, which might mean at some point bishop b8, once the king moves, bishop b8 will be good. Okay. h3, which seems timid. So why couldn't white go all in here? Is it harmless? Is it a perpetual check or anything? Check. There's, there's no there's no clear win is there so in the game h3 maybe an omission of some sort of defeat here uh, king c8 because it gives that bishop b8 now it's, it looks a bit safer all of a sudden and in fact after rook e1 uh, now there's a beautiful counter attack initiated by sure of a simple forcing move it seems on the surface anyway starting a vicious counter attack uh, can you spot it if I give you 10 seconds starting from now? What does Shirov play here to start his counter-attack? Starting from now, 10 seconds. Okay, counter-attack time. Bishop takes g2. And now Queen takes f5. Look at this hanging bishop here. So he's got bishop b8 if needed. This bishop's hanging. It's all over for white. It looks to be all over. Again, he's he's just a bishop down now. He's a bishop down. And now crushing move rook d4. So here white resigned. Um, so was that a thrilling game or what? The, the black king was chased. f7 seems to be a disaster area. Um, this weird knight c5 let's have a quick look in overview and summary um, if the queen moves now you know this looks like a total slaughter for the white king so um, quick quick overview and summary of this game so c3 clearly with a menacing queen b3 in mind <laughs> um, so rook e8 weakness of the last move f7 and um, e4 kind of wrenches away this pawn away from that diagonal and now queen b3 there we have it f7 a problem so rook e7 71 minutes on these two moves taking knight c5 wow <laughs> blimey knight c5 So then we have this king chase uh, with seemingly very dangerous um, situation. King chased over here. And then in the final stage we have some sort of counter attack with bishop takes g2. Um, and then black's all okay. So uh yeah so some easy to understand games this week <laughs> not i hope you enjoyed this week um so i'll put this on youtube and maybe we can continue the discussions there um okay so hope you enjoyed it this week and got something out of it maybe some entertainment if nothing else um these games are very difficult to simulate and even understand let alone um okay so not particularly strategic all pretty tactical this week um but i hope you enjoyed it uh, so, see you uh, next week. Okay. I'll put it on YouTube com Kings Crusher. Thanks very much. See you next week.